Rasmussen's drift is an incredibly important concept that I believe every health and safety professional around the world should take a moment to learn about and try and understand. It's from a paper from 1997 uh, authored by Jens Rasmussen called Risk Management in a Dynamic World, a Modeling Problem. Rasmussen suggests that systems operate at capacity but humans tend to try and get more out of the system that it's capable of. And this pushes us towards boundaries of the system's capability or boundaries of system capacity. Once we cross one of those boundaries, the system fails in some way and an accident occurs. Rasmussen's model contains three boundaries. The first boundary is the boundary to economic failure. That's the boundary at which if we were to cross that boundary, it's where the business starts to lose money and it will go broke. So we cross the boundary to economic failure, the business is not sustainable financially. Then we have the boundary to unacceptable workload. This is getting the, the human capacity. How much can humans work, be, uh, work? How much work can we take on before we break down and fail? Then there is the boundary of, to performance failure. At which stage do we cross that boundary where performance has failed and the system again uh, results in some type of accident or failure? Within those boundaries, we have the space of possibilities, degrees of freedom. Now, we can, the system will operate safely within all of those boundaries with free, degrees of freedom to operate. Meanwhile, we have management pressure away from the boundary to economic failure towards efficiency. So getting more done with less, trying to get more profit and, and minimizing uh, costs and expenses. We also have this gradient towards least effort. Now this is human inclination to try and do work or stuff things uh, using the least amount of effort possible. And it's a, an incredible instinct and survival um, technique that humans have. It, but it causes us to do things like cut corners, uh, find workarounds, take shortcuts. It doesn't mean that we're lazy. It's, a, it's, a, it's something that humans have done very well over time. But then we have this opposing gradient on efforts to improve safety, things like policies, procedures, training, efforts to change safety culture, which push back against those, those other boundaries, the boundaries um, or, or towards those gradients, management pressure towards efficiency and the gradient towards least effort. What that results in is these little uh, experiments within the system as we move around the space of possibilities, uh, which cr creates these what, what Rasmussen calls Brownian movements. Now I had to read up on Brownian movements. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a physics term and it results about these little random moves. So, attempt, so what we've got are these little um, oppose, these forces, we've got one pushing this way, we've got one pushing that way, and we've got the, the, the counter force uh, gradient from, from safety and it creates these little movements within, within the safe boundaries of the system. Knowing that we build in error margins. Once we put in our error margin to, to uh, try and keep us away from the, those boundaries of failure, we end up with this resulting perceived boundary to performance failure. But over time, this concept of normalization of deviance, now, if you haven't read it already, normalization of deviance is a chapter in this fantastic book by uh, Diane Vaughan that I recommend every safety professional to read. Normalization of deviance involves, we take those experiments to, as we, as we work within the, the safe boundaries of the system. So we take a shortcut. So a human takes a shortcut, we find a workaround. Over time, as we get comfortable with that and no negative consequence comes from that or positive, con positive consequence comes from it, we accept that as normal. And then as we experiment more and more and more management cuts a little bit more uh, of funding and puts us under a bit more pressure to work, work towards efficiency, and that's successful, that deviance away from the way we used to work becomes normalized and becomes normal. And normal work constantly changes. And this is where the drifting occurs. Because the, this normalization of deviance pushes that boundary 
go the perceived boundary of performance failure outwards towards the actual boundary of to performance failure which results in as we get closer and closer and closer to that boundary as we push the boundaries you've heard the saying we push the boundaries this is essentially what we do but it's in small little steps over time as we normalize deviance we move that boundary uh, the perceived boundary of performance failure the error margin gets smaller and smaller and smaller and we have an accident we cross the boundary we push back a little bit we learn from the accident over time another accident we try and push back again we put some of engines in place another accident it's really important to understand that how these things occur over time, how the normalization of deviance works and those boundaries of safe performance and why it is we need to spend a lot of time understanding and studying normal work. I'm glad you hope you got something out of this and I would love to hear your comments. If you've got anything to add, if you know even you've read even more about this than I have please share your comments about this incredibly important model. Thank you.